what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so i'm gonna check out 10 greatest passing of the torch moments in wwe it is a dope and uh surreal moment when you see a past wrestler passing on the torch to a, a younger up-and-coming wrestler it's it's one of those moments where the wrestler themselves want to be able to pass on the torch and to see that in the wrestler's character and this to see the fans see that and react to that is a beautiful moment obviously you can tell by the thumbnail the undertaker passing the torch to uh bray wyatt uh before he had passed uh, i believe it was on the monday night raw the 30th anniversary the triple x monday night raw he was there and he he said something to him it was the passing of the torch moment when he was feuding with la Knight. it was a it was a dope moment to see it was it was a holy shit moment and uh once again rest in peace bray Wyatt. he's gone too soon man we we miss you man and uh you know your family and friends we we love you man so we're gonna check out some of these other passing of the torch moments appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into this one man in wwe matches can take place which see a changing of the guard Mm -hmm. These matches represent a change in the hierarchy of the WWE <laughs> roster and ultimately lead to one wrestler passing the torch to the other. If WWE executes these moments well, they can create long-lasting memories, but if WWE fails to effectively deliver the so-called passing of yeah. the torch, then the moment can receive extensive criticism and backlash. Bats. The moment itself doesn't have to literally feature one wrestling holding the other wrestler's arm. It can sometimes be a heel or a babyface putting over their opponent in a convincing manner. And it is then the job of WWE's commentary team to smartly convey to the audience what has just gone down. Mm -hmm. Let's look at 10 passing of the torch moments in WWE. <coughs> Number 10, John Cena versus Austin Theory. Uh, Heading into John Cena versus man. Austin Theory at WrestleMania 39, there was a ton of pressure on Theory to deliver an exceptional performance. Theory's entire arc had revolved around him wanting to wrestle John Cena, and now he was getting the chance on the biggest stage imaginable. Cena, rather selflessly, put over Theory in the match, which was presented as a passing of the torch style moment, yet the fans outright rejected it. Yeah. The problem was that Theory wasn't ready for such a huge victory, and the fact that Theory had to cheat to defeat Cena didn't exactly paint yeah. Theory as a credible threat. Another criticism was that the match wasn't great, as Cena had excessive ring rust, and there was just a lack of chemistry in the ring between mm -hmm. the two men. There was a multitude of things that it didn't go the way they probably wanted it to go. Whilst it was appreciated that WWE did indeed try to make a new star with Theory, the timing just wasn't right, mm -hmm. and the moment could have easily been used to elevate someone else who was on the brink of greatness. Yeah, the thing is, his promo segment with john didn't help him john cooked him on live television it didn't help him there the match their in-ring chemistry like he said wasn't all there not to say it was a bad match but if this is a passing of the torch moment it didn't hit and the fact that he had to cheat i get it he's a heel or whatnot but it just it didn't help even more to his cause I, it would have been probably a little bit better if he actually would have beat John Cena clean, that would have been a that would have been good too. But also, you still got to put into consideration their ring chemistry didn't it didn't get to that next gear. It kind of stayed at first gear, and then that was it. It's like John did the job, which is awesome. I'm glad that John did do the job for Austin Theory, but at the same time, it hasn't really catapulted him like you think it should have. You know, so I don't know what they do with him going forward. Number 9, L.A. Knight versus The Miz. Mm, wow. The rise of L.A. Knight has truly been a joy to watch, and L.A. was given a huge moment at the 2023 Payback event. L.A. wrestled The Miz with John Cena as the guest referee. The Miz is one of the most consistent, reliable wrestlers in all of WWE. Whether you like him or not. It's been made clear how much WWE value The Miz, so to pair the two in a featured match on pay-per-view was a big deal for L.A. Knight. Additionally, the introduction of Cena as the special guest referee brought a brand new spotlight onto the match, as Cena, despite being semi-retired, is still one of the biggest names in WWE. Mm -hmm. The match itself was passable, but it was after the match in which memories were made. At the top of the stage, Cena would endorse LA by raising his hand high in the air. 
Some fans claimed that it was a forced moment, but Cena had been excessively praising LA in interviews, and there was no way that Cena would have done something he simply didn't want to do. And here's the thing about that, too. I, I, I do wish if they were to maybe tell a story there. Um, I, I want them to tell some type of story. I would love, you know, depending on how long John Cena's going to be around, that could be a passing of the torch moment. If you have John Cena and LA Knight have their little quick little robbery. If there's anybody that I feel like that can go toe to toe, especially on the microphone side of thing, promo side of thing, it's LA Knight. And I would love to see that. I I, I truly kind of reminds me of Daniel Bryan and John Cena. When Daniel Bryan was feuding with John Cena at that SummerSlam and the promo battles leading up to it and John Cena choosing Daniel Bryan as the person he wants to face at SummerSlam and how pretty much Daniel Bryan was like, I'm a wrestler, you know, basically he's letting him know, like, I wrestle, you, you, you're a sports entertainer, there's the difference, and I like that back and forth, and ultimately, Daniel Bryan winning the match was a big passing of the torch moment, of course, you know, uh, the cash in with Randy Orton and the betrayal, well, not betrayal, but, you know, uh, Triple H screwing over Daniel Bryan to set up something else, but that, to me, is kind of what I would like to see with LA Knight. They have their back and forth. LA Knight's like not the biggest fan or, you know, super friends with John Cena. But to have that back and forth and maybe a moment where LA Knight uh, beats John Cena, that would probably be a better passing of the torch moment if that was something they could do or had the time to do. Number eight, The Rock versus Brock Lesnar. Oh, Dub's not going to like this one. <laughs> the Rock's run as a full-time WWE star was coming to an end. The Rock had a like reputation one. for being completely selfless in the ring, and he was going to show this yet again in the biggest way imaginable. The Rock would drop the undisputed title to Brock Lesnar in the main event mm -hmm. of SummerSlam, and for many top stars, putting over a virtually untested star in the main event of a huge pay-per-view would have created problems, but The Rock welcomed the idea. The Rock brought his A-game to the match, as he made Lesnar look like the biggest star in the world, and it's mm -hmm. no surprise that the two legends remain friends over two decades later. The victory was a significant passing of the torch moment as WWE were going with Lesnar as the number one guy in the company and it would have been hard for the WWE audience to accept Lesnar in this position without The Rock's generosity. And plus, I know Doug's not going to like this, but you got to call spade a spade. At this time, people didn't, people weren't rocking with The Rock in WWE in the sense of they knew he was going to Hollywood. They knew that's what it was. He, they knew he was about to go to Hollywood and Brock was, you know, up and coming. So if you watch this match, Brock was the babyface. Even though he was the heel, he was the babyface more so in this match. And people wanted the Rock uh to lose. So it made it was it was it was the time. If if the Rock is leaving to do movies and he's not gonna be there as much, people know this to be true. It only makes sense for the up and coming guy to kind of get the the win there and get that rub. So I know Dove's not gonna like this, but that's what happened back then. So that's just what it was. <laughs> Number seven, Roman Reigns versus John Cena. <clears throat> Seemingly out of nowhere, WWE decided to book Roman Reigns versus John Cena yep. for the 2017 No Mercy pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. This was a certified WrestleMania main event, but WWE were giving the match away at a random pay-per-view. This match was evidently designed to show fans that Reigns was now the top star in the company, yet the fans were having such a tough time in welcoming Reigns to such a prestigious role in the company. Until many years the match later. itself was decent, and after Cena put over Reigns, Cena endorsed him to the audience, Didn't which work. was met with a mixed response. The issue here was that it felt overly forced and lacked authenticity. For a passing of the torch moment to work, it needs to feel real and genuine. Yeah. And this could have worked if Reigns had built up a positive connection with the audience. Facts. And we, we could see right through it, bro. We could see right through this one. And it's funny, John Cena's in a lot of these of passing of the torch moments. A lot of them haven't really worked. I don't know if they're going to talk about him, uh, John Cena, and Daniel Bryan, because that one actually worked. Even though he was already getting over, that one definitely worked um, for the time being. Uh, but yeah, Roman wasn't the Roman we got now. It didn't work. We knew that's what it was. You know, we could we could smith that a mile away. We knew what they were doing, but it he wasn't over with the fans, so it didn't matter what they did. The Rock couldn't get him over. What makes you think John Cena at that time was going to get him over? Number six, Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. 
No Mercy 2017 wasn't the only time in which WWE decided to attempt a passing of the torch moment with Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. As a few months earlier, WWE booked Reigns to take on The Undertaker at WrestleMania either. 33. It had the potential Heading into to. the match, the dead man was intending to retire following the main mm -hmm. event encounter with Reigns. The Undertaker was ready to call it a day, and he was going to put over Reigns and sail off into the sunset. The problem was that the match was atrocious. Yeah. The Undertaker was struggling to keep it together physically, and Reigns spent all of the match being booed. Yep. The match was so bad that The Undertaker decided to cancel his retirement plans, as there was no way that one of the greatest names in WWE history was going to go out with a subpar match. WrestleMania 33 was supposed to be The Undertaker's special night, but it was also designed to put over Reigns in the biggest way possible. Yep. And a victory over The Undertaker at WrestleMania was bigger than any world title that WWE had up for grabs. And here's the thing. This is why I do wish they would have kept his streak intact, because it would have been a much better impact if Roman was the guy to do it. I know some people wouldn't have wanted it to be broken, but if there's anybody that could have capitalized... It was Roman. Now, the only way that it would have made sense is if you turned them heel. They should have did it there. This was the only thing that could have saved him is if they turned them heel. And that's what we thought they were doing, but they didn't commit. If they would have turned him heel right after on that Monday Night Raw and committed to it, it would have been great. Even if you don't turn him heel, you could have turned him into like this anti-hero. Like he doesn't give a damn about how the crowd feels or whatnot. And then slowly morph him into turning heel, full-blown heel. It would have been so much better. They tried to tease it and then they just didn't commit to it. So none of this mattered. This loss was pointless because at the end of the day, no one still cared about Roman Reigns in the way they wanted him to. The dead man himself was a big fan of Reigns, both as a wrestler and as a human being, and he felt terrible about the disappointing match, so much so that the dead man would personally apologize to Reigns. Mm -hmm. Number 5, Raw is 30. Here we go. One of the more memorable moments of Raw is 30 saw a segment between The Undertaker, Bray Wyatt, and L.A. Knight. For great. the segment, The Undertaker reverted to his American badass persona, great, great, great. and after Wyatt performed his sister Abigail on L.A., The Undertaker whispered something in Wyatt's ear before riding off on his motorcycle. Rest in peace, A lot Bray, of man. fans have since labeled this as a passing of the torch moment, and in an out-of-character interview with Sportsnet, The Undertaker delved into why the segment was important and also offered some insight as to what he said to Wyatt. There's obviously a huge number of comparisons between his character and mine, and I think he's his own guy, he's his own character. I don't think it's fair to him to compare what he does to what I did. In the big scheme of things, it's kind of in that same supernatural, I don't know, what, genre? It's 2023 and he's doing his own thing, but I can appreciate it. I can see what he's trying to do, and mm -hmm. I just let him know, too. My phone's always on, and if he needs to talk to me about things or run things by me, that's cool. I would be more than glad to share my experiences with him, and hopefully shine some light on maybe questions that he has moving forward. So yeah, it was a cool moment, and it did exactly what I thought it would do. Number four, John Cena versus Daniel Bryan. I'm glad this was on the list. So glad they put this on the list. But before we get into that one, once again, rest in peace, Bray, man. If, if, if that's a major endorsement to get it from The Undertaker. If he gives you an endorsement like that, he obviously sees the potential. Um, like I said, rest in peace, Bray, man. Gone too soon. That was a beautiful moment that will live on forever. That was a holy shit moment. I was like, yo, this is so cool watching it live, so. Bryan. By the summer of 2013, Daniel Bryan had emerged as one of the most popular stars in all of uh -huh. WWE. Bryan was then sent to face the top guy I in WWE. It. This was it. John Cena I for the WWE it. title at that year's SummerSlam event. Cena did the honorable thing in putting over Bryan, and after the match, Cena endorsed Bryan in the yep. ring, and this was received extremely well by the fan base. Yep. The fans were ready for the torch to be passed, this and when it. the wrestler receiving the torch is someone that the audience genuinely cares about, then it's always going to receive a positive response. This, that worked perfectly, up until the, you know, the <laughs> cash-in and everything else, but that was fantastic. He was the guy. He was the most over a guy in WWE at that time. We hadn't seen someone that over since like Attitude Era. He was that over, bro. The the yes movement was unstoppable. It was organic. 
you 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 bought into who he was you bought into his character the ultimate underdog trying to achieve in a in a spot that wasn't meant for him to achieve in what it writes itself number three Shawn michaels versus stone cold steve austin yeah when wwe arrived at wrestlemania deserves 14, to be on this list as well Shawn michaels was getting set to take a step back from the company hbk had a ton of personal demons and his back was in less than stellar physical condition WWE would book HBK to drop the WWE title to Stone Cold Steve Austin at the aforementioned WrestleMania event, and this was done to get the title off HBK mm -hmm. and to pass the torch to WWE's new top guy. Austin had emerged as one of the most popular stars of all time, and WWE were going to enter a new era with Austin at they the They had hell. no other choice, bro. Number two, it, John He had to. He had to. There was no other choice. It was the perfect time for Stone Cold to win, and... Arguably one of the greatest and most over wrestling stars of all time. He's definitely on that Mount Rushmore. John Cena versus The Rock 2. <laughs> WWE made a daring choice in booking a rematch between John mm -hmm. Cena and The Rock for WrestleMania 29. Once you did that, you knew Their who prior was match winning. at WrestleMania 28 was well received, but there was virtually zero demand to see a rematch. Yeah. The logic from WWE's perspective was that the match would allow Cena to get his win back, and hopefully The Rock would pass the torch to Cena. This was problematic as Cena had already been the face of the company for the yeah. past eight years, so the torch was already on Cena, meaning that any literal or figurative torch passing was going to be met with criticism. The match itself was a total dud compared to the WrestleMania 28 encounter, uh -huh. as the crowd just weren't invested in the action. As many fans expected, after yeah. the match, The Rock would endorse Cena at the top of the stage in a moment that felt overly forced and disingenuous. It was number one. It was it was kind of pointless if you want to be honest. Like, I would have preferred the spiral of John Cena after he lost to The Rock, and then you could have did something else where maybe you can't you change John Cena's character. But they weren't gonna do that. He was already he he was over in the company's eyes and in the merchandise and you know the kids the younger kids loved him, but he wasn't over in the majority fan base like the the guys. He wasn't over with the fellas. Not until recently. Now he is because you don't see him as much and people just be like, you know, we love John Cena. But at one point, it was a lot of yays and a whole lot of deafening boos. It didn't, the, the passing of the torch moment didn't need to happen because he's been on top of the company for so long. Like, what torch did you need to be passed? I don't know. It, it wasn't going to work. It didn't work. I just really wish they would have went down that path of John Cena struggling after losing to The Rock and like actually maybe potentially turned them heel. I know they teased it and, and you know mentioned it here and there, but they didn't really turn him heel. But at the end of the day, that wasn't gonna happen. And I think it's it was way too late. It was it was never too late to turn him heel, but it, it just wasn't gonna happen. They Vince had pretty much made his mind up. It's, he's gonna stay a babyface until the end of time. On Hulk Hogan versus The Rock. <laughs> It's often been said that Hulk Hogan losing to the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6 was the passing of the torch moment. Uh -huh. However, Hogan has outright stated in an interview with WWE UK that he wasn't passing the torch in any way, shape, or form to the <laughs> Warrior. Sounds there was like a time when I was red hot in the 80s, and all of a sudden the 90s came, and it was time to pass the torch, but it didn't happen that way. I mean, they didn't have enough guys ready to lead at that time, so, you know, we skipped a generation. It took time <laughs> to pass that torch, which should have been passed at the end of the 80s. I mean, we tried with a couple of guys, putting the belts on them and stuff, but they weren't ready to run. <laughs> they weren't ready like John Cena. They weren't ready like The Rock. They weren't ready like Stone Cold. So it's very, very important that the torch is passed in the correct way, and the guys that have all this experience don't just walk away. They stay there long enough to build the storylines, build the talent, and then pass the torch in the correct way. It's very, very important. Hogan would eventually pass the torch in a match with The Rock uh -huh. at WrestleMania 18. Classic the match, match itself was extremely well received with it being considered one of the best matches in WrestleMania history. Uh -huh. And the passing of the torch moment between the two icons was presented perfectly. Yeah, I mean, granted, that was more so towards the tail end of The Rock's er everyday wrestling career, you can say. Like, he wasn't there as frequent. I think, honestly... Once he, once Hulk Hogan went to WCW, I mean Stone Cold, he he took the torch. <laughs> that it was, it didn't even need to be passed at that point. Stone Cold pretty much just took it. 
Stone Cold and The Rock, they kind of took it, but I get the symbolism when The Rock and the uh, Hulk Hogan had the match. You can see that was somewhat of a passing of the torch moment, even though it was much later in both of the guys' uh, respective careers. It definitely was a passing of the torch moment if you look at it that way. But Stone Cold took it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the ball and this is what i'm running with and nobody's stopping it so comment down below let me know some other passing of the torch moments you can remember or some of your favorite ones if they were listed in this video or weren't listed in this video but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel vote to 150k and i'm still getting speedy youtube best of the champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you next one man peace